After lengthy pleas to the United States, Ukraine will now be getting the F-16 fighter jets they have sought since the start of Russia's invasion in an effort to help Kyiv's war efforts. Both Denmark and Netherlands now have the permission from the Americans to provide those U.S. F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine once pilot training is complete. Both were waiting for that permission to be able to do so. What we do know is that the Danish will supply 19 of those jets. The Netherlands have 42 F-16s in their arsenal. The Dutch government has not yet publicly confirmed how much will be given to Ukraine. Joining us now is retired U.S. Army Brigadier General Steve Anderson. General, good morning to you. Uh, does this now, once the uh, F-16s arrive and they've been trained, does this establish the air superiority that the Ukrainians have said for more than a year that they've needed? Yes, Victor. I mean, this is going to go a long way in doing that. This is going to more than quadruple the size of their high-performance air fleet. So it's a really, really big deal operationally. Um, of course, politically, it's a hugely important message. It shows that the Danes and the Dutch have recognized that the Ukrainians are fighting not just for them, their own sovereignty, but for the defense of, the, of all of Europe. And we all need to recognize this. I think that the United States should follow this example from the Dutch and the, and the Danes. And we should pony up some of our F-16s as well. We have over 1,000 F-16s, and, uh, and we should be able to provide at least 50 or 60 over there uh, to help them, because they're going to absolutely need this if they're going to conduct any kind of a successful counteroffensive. They need to have air coverage. Presently, they don't have that. They're trying to root out maybe 200,000 Russians that have been dug in now for over a year, a very, very difficult thing to do. So they need air coverage. They need air superiority. These F-16s will operationally give them that once they've been trained. Once they've been trained is key. I mean, there were a number of lawmakers, Republicans and Democrats in the U.S. who had been calling on the U.S. to say, all right, you're not agreeing to give the F-16s yet, but at least start the pilot training. Mm -hmm. Lindsey Graham was one of them. Because it takes about four months at least, right? And now we need four more months until they can use them? I would say at least that. I mean, General Hecker, the commander of air forces in Europe, has said it's going to take four or five years to get these folks to do all the things you need to do. I mean, it's one thing to learn how to fly an aircraft. It's quite another to fly that aircraft in combat when people shooting missiles at you, air defense artillery systems and other fighters out there trying to shoot you down. Very, very difficult thing. I'm thinking at least eight or ten months. Now, my, my thoughts on this are we could use U.S. contractors that could probably accelerate the training, put simulators out there in Ukraine, you know, and put and, and station these aircraft within three or four hundred miles of the front lines. They're going to have to do that somewhere in Ukraine because maintenance is going to be a hugely important factor. They're going to be able to have uh, these are very complex machines and they're going to need to have a, a fleet of main maintainers that help them keep these things in the air. General, uh, Politico has reporting uh, this morning about the return of Trump and Ukrainians now are ramping up um, homegrown arming, uh, arms industry uh, with that return looming, suggesting that, as the former president has made oh. clear, that the U.S. is giving too much, in his opinion, to Ukraine. How much can they produce without U.S. help and how quickly can they get that up to speed? Well, I've been over there to Ukraine. It's the technological center of the former Soviet Union. So they, they have a lot of capability. I've been to actually the arms and security trade show, and they've got a lot of capability. But obviously, they're going to need to have the United States and NATO strong support. The Dutch and the Danes have demonstrated that by the, this announcement today. They're going to absolutely need to push forward all the logistics, all the repair parts, all the expertise they need to keep these things in the air. And, and I think that, uh, you know, obviously, Ukrainian is not, Ukraine is not going to be able to go it alone. They're going to need the United States and NATO to help them win this fight. We as Americans need to recognize that Ukraine is fighting for all of us, not just their own sovereignty. All right. Retired U.S. Army Brigadier General Steve Anderson. Always appreciate you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.